A few people on the For Against Darkness Adventurers Guild Facebook page have asked me in regards to how I use One Page Mythic and For Against Darkness together, so I've decided to put a quick video together for you. I think the first things first, you're going to need three things for this. Obviously, you're going to need whatever For Against Darkness uh, supplement you are using. You can use almost all of them. There is one that you can't use because it's more of a... Um, uh, a a choose your own adventure style book um, and as a result you can't do that it's um buried of the the four i believe it is or something like that um however any other um standard for or against doctor supplement will work including all of the um additional uh card games as well you can get obviously you're going to need one page mythic or mythic itself there are two different versions there's one page that just simplifies this table somewhat and then there's also the standard one which makes it slightly more complicated essentially we're going to use the one page mythic regardless of which version we're going to use and then in addition to that you're going to need two extra dice specifically you're going to need two d10s or a d10 and a simple uh, d100 dice just so you can roll essentially and that is going to be your GM. So any decisions that you're going to make throughout the whole campaign are essentially all going to be made on this one sheet of paper. Uh, there's essentially three different parts to it. There's going to be the Ask the Game Master, the Discover Meaning, and then there's a few random events things down here as well. Uh, but we'll go through them uh, as and when we get through them. So first things first, we're going to talk about the Mythic GM emulator itself. And essentially it comes down to one very simple mechanic. And that's essentially that you set the odd that you're going to have for any task or question you might ask. And then you're going to roll the dice and you're going to see what it fits within one of these four different categories. Obviously, you have your yes and your no. They're very simple. They'll just do, tell you one thing or the other. Um, however, you also have exceptional no or an exceptional yes. Essentially, this works a bit like a yes but or a yes and and a no but or a no and. You simply roll your dice. You try and work out exactly what it is based upon the table. And in this particular instance, I've got 33. Let's assume it's certain. Therefore, the answer is yes. And you simply go on your way. Essentially, that is the only thing you need to think about. There is an additional role to this. And essentially, that comes down to the random events. So if you come up with two of exactly the same, for example, 33, as we just had, you're going to have to ask the GM um, and you're going to have to generate a random event. Now, essentially, the way that you do this is you roll the dice again. Uh, you're going to roll them twice and you're going to work out what the discover the meaning is as a result. So quickly, we're going to have 81 and we're going to have 75. So if we look all the way down here for 81, you've got official and 75, you've got powerful. So depending on what you're doing specifically within your journey, you're going to have a result as a direct result. Now, we're going to go through some examples here just so everyone's super clear on how to use it and what we're doing. But essentially, we're going to use the For Against Darkness to have our standard campaigns. And then we're going to use One Page Mythic to link everything together. For our first example, we're going to go with a really simple one. This is the Guild of the Red Sphere. Essentially, they have a singular sphere within their guild and that's essentially the entire story is based upon that singular sphere. Now, obviously, it's really important to them, so don't want to take it with them everywhere they go. And as a result, in their guild halls, the little red mark that you can see here within the town of Gamli, they're going to store that um, sphere. So they've just been on an epic journey and they're just about to come back. And the first question that they're going to have is, have we been robbed? It is a mechanic in For Against Darkness, specifically TTT. Um, you can just roll the dice on TTT. Essentially, it becomes a case of yes or no, and it's simple as that. However, by adding Mythic One Page DM, we're adding an extra element of um, decision making that can give us somewhat more answers than we would initially get. So. I'm in my guild house. There is the option to have something called traps within your guild in TTT, but I'm going to assume that my guild currently has absolutely none at all. Therefore, the likelihood is of impossible, nearly impossible, very unlikely or unlikely, are somewhat negated. There's nothing there within my guild house to stop someone breaking in. However, the likeliness is purely going to depend on what you want to do. So it could be that you want a nice, easy game, therefore it's going to be incredibly unlikely. Or it could be that you like quite a hard game, therefore you're going to go for something that's more likely to be certain. I'm going to go with simply likely, simply because it's a fairly large style town. Um, it's a singular guild house. We're known around the area for having quite a lot of money. We just bought a new ship. And as a result, there's going to be quite a lot going on. So I'm going to say... 50-50 or likely, I'm going to go with likely just because of the size of the town. 
So I ask the game master the question, have I been robbed? I then roll the dice. I'm not sure if you can see that. So it's going to be zero seven. Therefore, I'm looking up zero seven and that's going to be an exceptional yes. So yes, I have been robbed, but there's also an exceptional element to it. What is that exceptional element? Now you could just say, well, obviously they've just, you know, robbed me blind. They're taking the sphere as well. Or it could be that maybe they haven't taken the sphere. So I'm going to ask the GM another question. And this time it's going to be, have they stolen the sphere? Um, sorry, before I roll, we need to work out the odds of this. Now, obviously the sphere is the really important thing within our guild. Therefore, it's going to be the best protected. Therefore, it's going to be the, the thing that they're going to try to make sure that no one has stolen. However, at the same time, it's going to be the thing that's going to draw someone's attention. For this one, I think it's probably going to be unlikely. The reason being is, yeah, it's a fantastic looking thing, but the thief might not necessarily know what it is. I mean, our guild definitely don't, and therefore it's extremely unlikely that the thief will. And as a result, I'm going to go with unlikely. I then roll the dice again, and this time I've come up with 50. So I'm going to go on here, 50 sits in the no category, therefore I have been rolled, but he hasn't taken the sphere. So what's the exceptional yes is my next question. Um, could it be that the thief is still there? Now that's an interesting one. So I'm going to go with 50-50 on that one and they're going to roll the dice again. This time it's 14. That means yes, the thief is still there. Therefore, I can then work out what my next step is going to be. Am I going to speak to the V, they're going to try and work out why possibly he's um, broken in, or am I going to start asking the question of how am I going to track this guy down, exactly what's going to happen. Therefore, you can sort of add on the journey as a direct result. Now, this did happen to me. Um, I went through a specific campaign, I was robbed, and as a result, I decided to go through one of the um, maps, specifically it was um, a, a totem based thing that was stolen from me um, and I used one of the posters essentially taking absolutely from everything from there and then sort of adapting the story as I went by. I just picked this one at random, I have a big list. So I ha essentially had to find the thief within the standard campaign. This wasn't something that I was planning, this wasn't something that was on the tracks but simply the dice decided to say that there was a thief. I did need to track him down and in the instance of my actual play, um, he was close, but he wasn't still within the guild. Therefore, I had to track him down on this and essentially I added an element of play that wouldn't normally be within the standard four against darkness campaigns. The second example I'm going to use is that of people or NPCs without your campaign. So I'm in a standard town. This is called Balg. It's a town that I happen to have come across. It's actually a city, my apologies. Um, and essentially, I'm not sure if you can see the greys, but they're different sectors within the city. And as a result, they have different people in charge. I picked these people at random. Um, essentially, it was from a different book that I stole the idea from. And so there are just essentially five groups within the, uh, the story itself. And this time, instead of having to ask specifically in regards to an event. Instead, I can ask in regards to how these people get onto each other. So maybe I want to know how uh, Lord Vish and the traders get on together. I'm going to say I have no idea. It's a completely new city. Therefore, I'm going to roll on the dice. It's 33. Therefore, it's going to be a case of the answer is yes. Now, there was a really important dice there. It was 33. This means that not only do we have to answer the question of yes, but we then have to go into discover meaning. So the question was, do they get on? I said yes, which is fantastic. I'm going to roll the dice. That's 79 and then 11. So I'm going to look on here and I'm going to have 79, which is going to be obstacle, and then 11, which is going to be cold. So there's something within this story that I then need to work out how obstacle cold is going to come into place. Now it could be, now it actually is in this instance, which is fantastic, that this is a snowy area. So cold makes absolute sense. And obstacle is the case of whoever the parties are, in this case, the traders and Lord Vish, are both trying to get something into the city or out of the city, but the snow is causing issues. Therefore, they're working together to try and work out how to get around that snow. Therefore, I've just added an extra element in. So I'm into the city now. I know that those two people get on and I know it's snowy. Is this something that I can help on? Once again, I can then ask on the Mythic GM to work out exactly what the likelihood is, is to then work out how I can then add that element into my story. And essentially, Mythic GM and then Four Against Darkness come together to make a story that you can then use the dungeons and essentially link them all together. Hopefully that helps everyone. And if there's any questions, just drop them in the comments below.